love off-roading in the state of Utah. And throughout our adventures, we have found that there are so many trails that you can do in a stock vehicle. Crazy, I know. Today, I'm excited to share our top 10 favorite trails in Utah that we've had the privilege of conquering with our stock vehicles. These trails, which most of them are off the beaten path, have become part of our adventure story. We would love to invite you to add them to your bucket list. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, these were super hard for us to rank, but we're gonna do the best that we can. So coming in at number 10 is the River House Ruin in Blanding, Utah. Petroglyphs, Mormon history, ancient ruins, and epic views, this trail is one you will not find in most off-roading guides. To be honest, the trail is pretty easy. It's filled with several water crossings, low passages, sandy bits, and just a few rocks in there just to spice it up. What's really special about this trail is all the history that's located as you drive. If you want to think of it this way, it's really a trail through human history of the area. You'll see the famous San Juan Hill, River House Ruin, and of course, the famous Kachina Panel. What else could you want in an off-road trail? Coming in at number nine is Seven Mile Rim, located in Moab, Utah. mostly famous for trails such as Hell's Revenge, but we think that this trail offers way more famous scenery and is a way better trail for anyone who wants to visit the Moab area. This trail features some of Moab's best geology. The trail route is actually near the Moab fault line, a geological feature that left the trademark rocks of Canyonland standing higher than the surrounding colorful Morrison formation that you see around Moab. The rim views include Seven Mile Canyon, Arches National Park area, and the Book Cliffs to the north. Besides the epic and beautiful views that you'll have throughout this trail, you'll have several obstacles to keep you going and meet all your Jeepers fancies, and you'll also get to see the famous Uranium Arch. Coming in at number eight is the famous Torquaville Falls in Laverkin, Utah. Desert waterfall, anyone? If you love an epic waterfall at the end, this trail is for you. It begins in the town of Torquerville. It's north of St. George, about 30 minutes or so. There are a few rutted parts of the road that require some careful tire placement, so don't think you're just gonna cruise right through on this one. However, it's nothing too technical. When you conquered the trail, you'll get to stop at the falls which can vary on their looks depending on water flow. Our favorite part of this trail was getting to drive across the actual waterfall top at the very end of the trail. Super neat, highly recommend. If you're ever in the area and like waterfalls, this is a must do trail for you. Coming in at number seven is the Little Wild Horse Loop located near Hanksville, Utah. Almost like landing on Mars, this trail is like going to another planet. Most of the area around Hanksville, Utah is like nothing you've ever seen before if you've never been to the western part of the United States. This destination is truly amazing and gets overshadowed by other areas that are famous in Utah. Wild Horse Loop starts at the Goblin Valley State Park, which is another great destination that you should probably add to your list. Then eventually it makes its way towards Factory Butte. On this trail, you'll wind your way through the famous, colorful Bentonite Hills. You'll see an old homestead. You'll get to cross the famous Muddy Creek and eventually go to the play area near Factory View, which is an open OHV player area for vehicles. 
pretty awesome. Now this trail can change constantly, so it's hard to give it a rating, but most people say it rates about a moderate depending on the weather situation. Coming in at number six is West Rim Light Trail in Hurricane, Utah. This trail is a great introduction for anyone who has never been off-roading in Sand Hollow State Park before. So the West Rim Light Trail is a sandy, rocky dirt track. Initial climb from the Washington Dam Road area can be a little bit sandy mixed with some bentonite clay soil, so you want to be careful if it's wet. You'll get some awesome sandstone cliffs and ledges along the way, and also the famous toll booths. Really, there's some awesome geologic formations to see, such as the Hobbit House, and you'll eventually end up with the overview of Sound Mountain. Really, this is a fun trail that takes about half a day, and you can connect it with either other trails or go out towards Sand Hollow Reservoir. It's time for us to move on to the top five. Coming in at number five should be no surprise, but the famous White Rim Trail in Canyonlands National Park. <laughs> is truly a classic and so of course we had to include it on the top five of our list. This trail is about 103 miles long and makes a loop around the rim in Canyonlands Island in the Sky. Technically the trail is fairly easy as long as you use correct tire placement but the park surface does require four-wheel drive for low range in order to get a permit to do this trail. The main attraction of course is the awesome views that you will get throughout this entire trail. You also have features like arches, epic overlooks, and some history along the way besides just enjoying being out in the middle of nowhere. If you're planning on doing White Rim to truly enjoy it, you need a minimum of two days to do this appropriately. Otherwise, you'll feel rushed and you'll be super tired and you won't get to enjoy the trail the way you should. Coming in at number four is one that you probably haven't heard of before, but we're talking about Eagle Canyon located near Hanksville, Utah. through some of the most historical and epic areas in the San Rafael Swell. Notable along the journey is the Swayze's Cabin and Icebox. Swayze's Cabin was built in 1921 by Joe Swayze and was occupied there while they did some ranching. Besides that, once you get on the main part of the trail, you'll get to see Eagle Canyon Arch. Eventually you'll wind your way and get to see the famous I-70 Eagle Canyon bridges, which their structural look is amazing. And eventually, you'll get to do the squeeze under I-70. So if you're in a full-size rig like we were when we were in our Ram 1500, we only had an inch or two to spare, so keep that in mind that width may be an issue if you're full-sized. But if you're mid-sized, you should fit just fine. We're into the top three, and for number three, this is one of my personal favorites, and it is Cathedral Valley Loop in Capitol Reef National Park. Beauty beyond compare, epic night skies, and amazing monoliths are all things that have been used to describe this trail. In my opinion, none of them do it justice. In the northern area of Capitol Reef National Park, this loop, Cathedral Valley, has some of the most stunning views in Utah. It's difficult to get to, so that's what makes it so much more fun. If you have an off-road vehicle to get there, you get to start this trail by doing an epic water crossing, and eventually you get to see a sinkhole and 
epic mining along the way before you end at Temple of the Sun and Temple of the Moon. Because of the ruggedness to get there, it is a lesser visited area of the park since a lot of times the river flows will prevent you from entering the area to start the loop. Find yourself in a rugged place with natural beauty that until you see it in person, video just can't capture it. So now we're on to number two, and of course we had to go back to the Moab area, Dome Plateau Trail. If you've ever driven Dome Plateau, you know that it is one of the most underrated trails near Moab, Utah. Dome Plateau is a large highland north of the Colorado River and east of Arches National Park. It gives you epic views throughout the trail that can't be seen anywhere else. The trail goes up from the historic Dewey Bridge on top of the plateau where you can see the Colorado River for miles. It follows the Entrada Sandstone Cliffs, eventually leads you to several different canyon viewpoints. The trail eventually loops around the backside of Arches National Park and you get to see the La Boca Arch, which will take some more finagling to get a stock rig in there, but it's totally doable. We did it in a long bed Tacoma. Some other interesting areas are the sandstone caves that you can find along the way when you go back to the exit to the north. And if you know where to look, there's even dinosaur tracks on this trail and some mining history. Really, this trail has it all. Probably wondering what number one is. What could possibly be better than Dome Plateau? Number one is the Barracks Trail in Kanab, Utah. The Barracks Trail in Kane County, Utah is truly an amazing destination to see and to drive on. It's a really great area to see the backside of Zion and really get some epic views that you cannot get in other places in Utah. This trail is about 27 miles in length. If you choose to do this trail, you'll want to run it from south to north due to the epic sand hill that it is famous for. If you run it from north to south and the sand is too hot, you might not be able to get up the sand hill to complete the rest of the trail. The south side of the trail is rather easy, has a lot of sandy bits, but with lots of trees and is really a nice area to explore. The trail is more difficult after you complete the sand hill. So a quick note is that this trail may not be open for much longer pending the BLM decision on their alternatives for the area plan that they are currently working with. So if you want to do this trail, it's better to put it on your list and do it ASAP. Obviously, there are so many trails that we didn't cover here today. There are tons of them that are doable for stock off-roaders, but these are just our personal favorites that we still talk about to this day. Did we miss a trail that you truly love and you think is doable for a stock off-roader? Comment down below and let us know what that one is. Hopefully, you can use this list to add new adventures for you and your family. We hope to see you on the trail soon, but bye for now.